Deep sea diving is a wonderful lottery. We have no idea what's lurking beneath our waters, and some of the discoveries found by these divers are truly astounding. The Cipher Machine E. It was developed in the early 1920s as a handy tool for businessmen to keep commercial messages. Let's see if you'd like to go scuba diving by the end of this video. Here are the 15 strangest things found by deep sea divers. <coughs> Monster Jellyfish If you're afraid of jellyfish, you might not be too pleased to see our first topic. Deep-sea divers were swimming off the coast of Cornwall in England and were simply stunned by what they saw – a one-and-a-half-meter jellyfish. Diver Lizzie Daly told The Guardian, We have seen a few smaller jellyfish at a beautiful reef nearby, and then out of the murk came this huge, beautiful jellyfish. You just take a double look and ask yourself if it's actually a meter and a half long. These are known as barrel jellyfish. Luckily, their sting is not normally harmful to humans, and these fish are more like a gentle giant. Daly said, If you touched it, you wouldn't feel it. It's that minimal. These jellyfish were a rare sight to behold, but maybe not for too long. Rupert Kirkwood, also known as the Lone Kayaker, wrote on his blog earlier this year, There are more barrel jellyfish around the coast of southwest England than I've ever seen in 15 plus years of sea kayaking. There could be a number of reasons for this. One cause may be that one of its predators is becoming endangered, meaning that it's hunted less often. Another reason is that the seaside of the southwest of England has experienced much nicer weather, meaning that these jellyfish are much more visible in the water. The warmer weather also means that there has been more vegetation and plankton growing in the water, which may have motivated the jellyfish to swim near these waters. Nonetheless, it looks like these guys are here to stay. Now let's get ready for today's Missing Topic. Next up, our Missing Topic. As humans, we have only discovered less than 10% of the ocean, meaning that most of the ocean is a place never observed by humans before. When a Norwegian fisherman heard that we know less than 10% about the ocean, he decided to do something about it. He was getting rid of an old phone, so he decided to leave on the phone's camera and let it sink to the bottom of the sea. He had this camera still linked to his cloud, so he could look at this footage later on his PC. He looked through 20 minutes of dull footage until he could not believe his eyes. He saw what looks like an underwater civilization. He speculated that this could be a secret underground base for the USA or the Kremlin. Or even more frightening, a civilization none of us even know about. This discovery underwater scares scientists. We're really scratching our heads with this one, so we need you guys to help us out. What do you think is happening? Let us know in the comment section below and make sure to include the hashtag missing topic. Oh, and we have another topic coming up later on which may help. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? <laughs> Creepy Pyrosomes But first, we're going to take a look at the pyrosome. A pyrosome is often called the unicorn of the ocean. Rebecca Helm in Deep Sea News spotted it during a dive and said, I actually gasped in recognition. My first real-life pyrosome. Among many marine inclined folks such as moi, pyrosomes are like unicorns, completely improbable, utterly mysterious. It's only when you see them up close that you realize just how amazing they are. When looking at these pyrosomes from a distance, it looks just like one singular creature floating through the sea. What you're actually looking at is a colony of different tiny organisms working together, and that's what makes it even more mysterious. How do all of these organisms collectively work together? And why? The reason why is probably quite straightforward. Strength in numbers. If you're a tiny crustacean alone in the ocean, there's a chance that you'll be gobbled up by a bigger fish within a matter of minutes. As a pyrosome, these crustaceans can trick other fish into believing that they're one massive fish and they'll keep their distance. However, this tactic doesn't always work. In fact, sometimes turtles or tiny lobsters will cling on to the pyrosome so that they can have a continuous source of food and just gently nibble away whenever they're feeling hungry. It wasn't until the divers got up close that they could fully see how the pyrosome worked. At their distance, they could see all of the little sea creatures working together in the colony. All of the different colors together create a purely spectacular vision. The scientist Thomas Huxley famously said, 
I've just watched the moon set in all her glory and looked at those lesser moons, the beautiful Pyrosoma, shining like white hot cylinders in the water. <laughs> Deep Sea River We now move on to one of the most amazing diving spots in the world. Cancun itself is a dream location for divers, but one particular spot is truly incredible. Cenote Angelita looks like a small pond, but actually goes 66 meters underground. Once the river reaches 27 meters below the surface, a thick hydrogen sulfide cloud begins to emerge. The water is so different that it's as if it's a river beneath another river. There are colorful foliage and branches coming from the river. When you see scuba divers swimming down to the river, it looks like they're flying in the air. A reviewer on scubaboard.com said, as you emerge, the water is so clear that you feel like you're above water and almost feel like taking off your mask. You swim around a little half in the cloud and half out, and the experience is just magical. And in ancient times, they believed that this water was literally magical. The ancient Mayan people who roamed Mexico many years ago used to celebrate religious rites at this river. This even included human sacrifices. As you can imagine, this site is only reserved for the most experienced divers. <laughs> Ticking time bombs. Next up, these divers found something which was like a trip back in time. Polish divers were passing through the Baltic Sea and found something truly terrifying. It was a bomb and they needed to act fast. Not only did the divers need to get back to the shore, 750 people from the nearby town had to be evacuated. The bomb was from World War II, so specialists needed to travel back underwater and disarm it immediately. This was a bomb developed by the Allies. It's called the Tall Boy, or sometimes referred to as the Earthquake Bomb. It's 6 meters long and weighs 5.4 tons. It was clearly designed to do a lot of damage. It's believed that the British Royal Air Force dropped this bomb in 1945 and tried to sink the German boat known as the Cruiser. This bomb missed the boat and clearly sank to the bottom of the ocean. To stop it from going off, a remote device was sent into the water to get rid of the bomb's charge. A controlled explosion was simply too dangerous. If this bomb were to go off, it would cause a seismic shock that could destroy properties on the shore. The bomb was diffused, but also let an explosion too. Thankfully, no humans were near the danger zone while this happened and the explosion was not as big as anticipated. <laughs> Ooh. Ugliest fish in the world Our next topic takes us to Japan. Most divers swim through the depths of the ocean to marvel at other creatures. However, one particular Japanese diver swims so he can see an old friend. Hiroyuki Arakawa has had an unlikely 25-year-long friendship. He's best buds with a friendly Asian sheep's head wrasse named Yuriko. Hiroyuki usually greets Yuriko with a kiss on his forehead. When they first met, Yuriko was at death's door. So, Hiroyuki even ended up feeding Yuriko 10 crabs a day until he got his health back. It was the start of a beautiful friendship. And one of the most amazing things about this fish is that it can tell humans apart. Scientists essentially showed the fish two images of humans and trained them to spit their jets at the pictures. The fish were able to distinguish between the two human faces. So they tried to make it even harder. They presented them black and white images, and even still, they were able to tell the difference based on the head shapes. The fish showed an 86% accuracy level. Haruyuki told the great big story. I guess she knows that I saved her and that I helped her when she was badly injured. I think anyone can get an animal's attention by feeding them. <laughs> Underwater Laboratory some of the most amazing things found underwater are actually built by us humans. We have laboratories in the North Pole and even in space, so it's only natural that we also have one deep beneath the sea. This is Aquarius and is built beneath the sea. It was built in Victoria, Texas in 1986. The laboratory has hosted more than 200 scientists from 90 different organizations, including NASA. So why would a space station want to tunnel underwater? Well, the very harsh conditions under the sea are not too different from traveling into space. So, astronauts sometimes practice or prepare for spacewalks by traveling at the bottom of the sea. Scientists simply scuba dive to the bottom and enter it through an airlock. Inside the lab is a radio transmitter so they can communicate with another base on land. 
Marine scientists live and work at this lab for sometimes up to two weeks. The record is 31 days. And you may have been thinking, does this have anything to do with this video's missing topic? Maybe the image contained an underground lab of some sort, but why do we not know about it? Haunted Blanket One of the strangest things you could find underwater is what's known as the Blanket Octopus. As the name suggests, this is an octopus which looks remarkably like a washed-up blanket. The blanket is a long, fleshy cape which encloses the octopus tentacles. The reason why it was this huge is that it can make itself look larger and thereby scare away predators. However, this is the female blanket octopus. The make blanket octopus has no blanket at all and is about the size of a walnut at 2.4 centimeters. This is apparently the largest size difference between males and females in the entire animal kingdom. But the strangeness of this octopus doesn't end there. When hunting prey, this octopus uses the tentacle from a toxic jellyfish to hunt other fish. This unique hunting method suggests that these octopus are quite intelligent. If you're diving and see these folks, you might want to keep a safe distance. <laughs> forest of the Weird Next up, what if I told you that there was a forest beneath the sea? 7,700 feet beneath the surface area, this array of grass sponges. In this footage taken by NOAA's Okeanos Explorer, it says, Every time we do these dives, all I can think about is, this is the type of experience someone would have if they found life on another planet. If you look closely, you can see that most of the plants are facing in the same direction. That's because they're facing the current and can catch plankton in this way. When you're diving underwater to see these, you're also kind of taking a trip back in time. Some of these sponges are the oldest creatures ever on Earth and have been on this planet for 10,000 years. <laughs> Gnome Cemetery If you go deep sea diving off the coast of North England, you'll essentially find the last thing you would expect, a garden gnome. One of them was left down at the bottom of the sea and it spiraled from there. Eventually, you could have a gnome cemetery down at the bottom of the sea. The gnomes also have become a game among scuba divers. They'll plant it down at the bottom of the sea in hopes that another person might find it. Because of this craze, authorities have even started removing gnomes as the areas where they're left are actually quite dangerous. One gnome cemetery was completely removed, so divers built an even deeper garden gnome cemetery, daring the police to go down even deeper. PC Kenny McMahon, a member of the Northwest Police Underwater Search Unit, told the Bolton News, we went down there, put them in bags and removed the lot but now there's a rumor about a new garden beyond the 50-meter depth limit. As police divers, we can't legally dive any deeper. So if it exists, the new garden could have been purposefully put out of our reach. <laughs> sunken freighter And at the bottom of the sea, there will undoubtedly also be sunken ships. In 2019, the 180-foot Voicey Bernadette freighter sank in 100 feet of water in St. Lucie County, Florida. This boat was confiscated by authorities as it was believed to be used for smuggling drugs. They essentially had a boat that they didn't know what to do with, so decided to put it to good use. The authorities deliberately sank the entire boat to the ocean floor and turned it into an artificial coral reef. When you sink a ship to the bottom of the seafloor, it provides a new hard surface for algae and barnacles to live on. This algae and barnacles could provide food for other fish who will decide to also live near the ship. Those fish, in turn, might be hunted by even bigger fish, and by then, you've basically created a new reef or ecosystem under the sea. Once run by gangsters, the boat now literally sleeps with the fishes. <sighs> Creepy Whale Fall Sunken boats create their own coral reef. But there are other things which do an even better job. When a whale dies, it simply sinks to the bottom of the ocean like a ship. But once the whale has fallen to the ground, something strange happens. What we might look at as a dead whale, other creatures across the ocean look at like food. One Natural History Museum London representative compares it to a Thanksgiving buffet. Like your family coming from all over the country for these events, different species come from all over the deep sea to feast on this huge amount of carbon that has just arrived. So the dead whale becomes an ecosystem of its own. They're called whale falls, Fish at the bottom of the ocean, like octopus and 
worms all start devouring the whale and even living around it. The whale fall ecosystem goes through four stages. First is the scavenger stage, where they begin eating the flesh of the whale. This is mainly inhabited by big fish. Second, the enrichment opportunist stage is where smaller organisms look for leftover tissues. They basically get the scraps. Third, you get the self-fulfilling stage where bacteria and microbes start appearing on the whale fall. This can result in the whale turning into strange colors such as white, yellow, and orange. The last stage is the reef stage where some fish survive on fat from the bones. Invisible sea creature Scuba divers in New Zealand run the risk of bumping into a fish without noticing. And believe it or not, there are fish out there which are completely sea true. Stuart Fraser, a fisherman who caught the fish, told Metro UK, I was in two minds whether to haul it in, but curiosity got the better of me and I decided to take a closer look. It felt scaly and was quite firm, almost jelly-like, and you couldn't see anything inside aside from this orange little blob inside it. Fraser also had no idea what the fish was, but experts have looked at the photos and believe that it's a Salpa Magyar. The Director of Conservation and Communication at the National Marine Aquarium told the Daily Mail, little is known about these salps, however, they're often found in colder seas with the most abundant concentration found in the Southern Ocean. <laughs> Giant Mouth Sharks Next up, we have one of the most dangerous looking creatures in the water, the basking shark. It's the second largest fish in the world and is noticeable by its incredibly huge mouth. But despite its terrifying appearance, these creatures are largely harmless to humans. They mostly eat plankton, which they consume by simply keeping their mouths open and waiting for the plankton to float inside. These sharks can weigh over 10,000 pounds, which is the same weight as five great white sharks. They can also jump outside of water. These sharks can jump over a meteor above the water surface and usually do this to clean off parasites. So don't let looks deceive you, these guys are relatively friendly. <laughs> Crosses of Malpique Off the coast of the Canary Islands, divers were horrified when they discovered an underwater graveyard. The most frightening thing of all is that it was not a land-based graveyard that got submerged underwater but a cemetery deliberately placed beneath the sea. The story behind this graveyard takes us back to the 1700s. A Christian missionary was sailing from Portugal to La Palma, one of the Canary Islands. However, during this time, the Canary Islands were an important trading colony, so pirates were roaming the waters. A famous French pirate, Jacques de Sores, caught the boat by surprise and took over the ship. There were 40 men on board the ship and they ruthlessly decided to dispose of all of them. They were thrown off the boat and he watched them drown. These poor men were named martyrs by Pope Benedict XIV in 1742. 309 years later, the Catholic community went one step further and dropped crosses at where they believed the deaths had occurred. In 2014, a stone cross was also placed at a nearby lighthouse to commemorate their loss. Mystery War Machine our last topic takes us to Germany, where scuba divers discovered something from the country's dark past. Scuba divers from the World Wildlife Foundation were trying to take an abandoned fishing net out of the water. At the bottom of the Baltic Sea was an Enigma encryption machine. This machine was used to send coded messages by Nazi Germany during World War II. The divers took the machine and brought it back to shore. They then gave it to experts to find out more about this machine. Historians believe that this machine was thrown overboard by a German U-boat. The Allied forces were also trying to get their hands on these machines as they could never uncover what the Germans were communicating with each other. Apparently, the Germans changed the codes of their messages every 24 hours. It took the British mathematician and the father of modern computing, Alan Turing, to finally crack the codes in 1941. That concludes our 15 strange things that deep sea divers have found. So, what's the verdict? Has this video piqued your interest in marine life or made you never want to get back in the sea again? Hopefully the first option. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you again in the next video.